I am Ann Elsner, professor at the Indiana University School of Optometry. I am Dr. Brett King, clinical associate professor at the Indiana University School of Optometry. We wrote a review article, Screening for Macular Disorders, The Optometrist's Perspective, that tells how many people worldwide are at risk for severe vision loss. A major portion of patients with visual impairments have retinal and cortical disease. The retina is a layer of neurons that is as thin as a piece of tissue paper and lines the inside of the eye. The choroid provides metabolic and structural support of the retina. Our article discusses the many technical challenges in obtaining a retinal image that is of good enough quality for screening, particularly in older eyes. Retinal images must be taken through the pupil, but the pupils of older eyes are often small, even in dim light. The amount of light scatter increases with increasing age, which can wash out the photos. When cataracts develop, it is difficult to assess the retina. It is hard to see some of the retinal structures in darkly pigmented eyes. Here is a color photo of the type used in the screen, showing the inside of the eye of a patient with diabetes. The retina is nearly transparent. We see the retinal blood vessels. The phobia is here in the center of the macula. If the phobia is permanently damaged, no other area of the retina can provide as distinct and detailed vision for the patient. The retina is readily damaged by disease since it has a high metabolic rate, is exposed to light over the years, and is central nervous system tissue. This patient is an underserved diabetic patient who is from the collaborative study with Eon Imaging, Indiana University, and the University of California at Berkeley, and IPACS. We found that for the sample of more than 2,000 diabetic patients, more than 66% said that they had not had an eye examination in the last three years. The typical recommendation is actually an eye examination each year for diabetic patients, and certainly at least within three years. Here we see a cross-sectional image of our diabetic patient's retina, but taken with a different instrument. This image is from a technique called optical coherence tomography, which shows the buildup of lipids and proteins beneath the surface of the retina. When the blood retinal barriers fail, diabetic macroedema occurs. This is the chief cause of decreased visual acuity in working age individuals. Color photographs are a typical method used in screening for macular disease. Screening with images is also used in other macular disorders. This color image shows how the phobia can be destroyed by degenerative myopia. When a patient becomes very myopic or nearsighted, the eye can elongate and the retina and choroid are stretched thin. The optical coherence tomography image shows that the layers of the retina are severely disrupted. The region where the phobia once was is severely damaged and this patient is unlikely to be able to read rapidly or recognize faces. The main causes of visual impairment are age-related macular degeneration or degenerative myopia as the top cause and then diabetic retinopathy. Glaucoma can also cause macular impairment, although it is thought of more as a peripheral vision disorder. Hereditary retinal degenerations cause macular vision impairment, also amenable to screening. Finally, in special populations, such as individuals born prematurely, there are two additional causes of impaired vision, retinopathy of prematurity and degenerative myopia.